Windows Server 2025 also has the remote desktop services, just like previous versions. I'm going to go ahead and install that and show you all the different features. Before we go into the installation, I just want to show you what a remote desktop server farm looks like, whether you're using Windows Server 2025 or an older version of Windows Server. So first, we take a look at the network switch. The network switch is what everything connects into. And we've got all these separate servers that you see here as well. Now, keep in mind that you don't have to have a separate server for each different role. You could, as I'm doing in the demonstration upcoming, do this all on a single server if you'd like. But if you want to create a complex server farm, you can do that here. And I'm going to show you all the different server roles that you're going to be able to use. So for instance, let's start with this internal PC. So you'd say you got a Windows 10 or a Windows 11 computer, and it's trying to connect into remote desktop. So it does so from its computer, as you see in the bottom center, and it connects to the network switch. Then all these different servers have their own particular role that they need to play. Besides having access from the inside of your network, you might also see external PCs connecting from uh, somewhere outside, such as from their home or from a hotel or from some other location. So they may VPN in first and then go into your network through the firewall. Either way, they all end up at the network switch. So what happens next? So they're all using the remote desktop protocol client to want to connect to applications running on your remote desktop server farm. So it's going to go off to the gateway server if you install the gateway server role. Now, in most cases, we don't do that, which I'll explain here in a second. After that, it's going to go, say, to the web server. That is if you're using the web services, which we will be doing in this upcoming demonstration. Then it goes off to the license server. The license server says whether or not this user can connect into the network because there's a proper license or cannot because there's not a license. And once again, this could be a separate server or the same server as we'll be showing in the demonstration. Then the license server goes back to the network switch and goes down to the broker server. The broker server is the one that's going to redirect the request from the clients, whether they're external or internal, and say, this particular request is going to go to one of our session servers. The session servers is where all of the different sessions serving up the different applications are going to happen. And we have RDS1 and RDS2 for that purpose. So from the broker, it's going to go off to RDS2, for instance, or RDS1, depending on which server has the most amount of resources available or the least amount of users. Now let's take a look at the demonstration for installation as well as configuration of remote desktop services on a Windows 2025 server. So inside Server Manager, I'm going to click on Add Roles and Features, and we get the wizard that appears. I will click Next. And I'm going to choose the Remote Desktop Services Installation option. Now, you can choose the role-based one, but then you'll have to individually install all the different parts, and it's really easy to miss a piece. So it's much easier to choose the Remote Desktop Services option. I'll click Next. Now I can choose either the Standard Deployment or the Quick Start. The basic difference between the two is the Quick Start also adds in a collection of various different web applications that you can add into a remote desktop using a website. I'm going to choose the Standard Deployment just because I can add in those collections later on, which I will do. And now I have a couple of options for the type of deployment. I'm going to choose the session deployment, which is the more traditional option and will be used in most cases. If you would like to choose the virtual desktop option, the virtual machine option, then you'll need to also install Hyper-V and make sure you have enough resources to allow everyone to have their own virtual machine uh, instead of sharing the session, which is what the traditional way of going about it does. So I'll click Next. And I only have the one server for this demonstration, so I'm going to install all the different roles onto this one server. So the first thing it's asking me is the server pool. So if I have multiple different servers, I could put them all into this server pool for remote desktop connection broker service. The remote desktop connection broker role 
basically will redirect a user to a server that's available that has the session role on it in order to pick the server with the least amount of users on it and has the most amount of resources. And so you've got to have a broker in order to do that if you're going to be doing a server farm. Now, I just have the one server, so that's okay. It's just going to keep it on the same server that I'm on. Now I have the option for the remote desktop web access role service. If you don't plan on using the web access option, then you, you can just go ahead and uh, just move the server over and be done. But I'm going to choose to also install the web access role service on top of it. Now that would have happened automatically if I chose the quick start. So I'll click next. And next we have the session host. The session host actually runs all the different remote desktop requests from the various different users that tried to connect to it. So you have to have at least one session host. And next we have the installation portion. In order to continue, I'm gonna to have to click on restart the destination server automatically if required. So I'll click deploy. And it will definitely restart. And sometimes it'll restart a couple of times. So make sure this isn't a production server before you start doing this installation. In order to properly use the web server role, we have to have a certificate. But I don't have a certificate. So I'm going to go ahead and create a self-signed certificate rather than purchase a public one. Uh, the public certificate that you buy from, say, GoDaddy or Network Solutions is a much better way to go because you don't end up getting any types of errors on your web browser. A, another option that doesn't cost anything but does require some additional connection uh, type setup is going to be install the certificate services on the server. Then you can create your own certificate and have group policy trust that certificate, assuming you're using Active Directory. Now in server 2025, you may see this uh, pop-up that happens that says that something's been blocked. So you want to make sure that you allow on the device. Otherwise, the, some of these installations that you do for services such as role services, server roles, and features might end up getting blocked. Now I'm going to go into PowerShell under the terminal admin. And don't worry, I will go ahead and add in these particular commandlets for you so you don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to change to the root of the C drive. So when I create this certificate, it's going to go ahead and create it on the root, which is just going to make it easier to find. So this is the new self-signed certificate. And I'll go ahead and do that. Press enter. And there's my thumbprint. We're going to need that thumbprint in a second. Now I'm going to add in a password. Now I'm not using a very secure password. You're going to want to do that. But that makes it so the certificate can be exportable using the private key, which is what we're going to need. So next I've got to copy this thumbprint and paste it into the next commandlet. Otherwise, that commandlet won't work. And lastly, I've exported my certificate off to the root of the C drive using the unique thumbprint of that particular certificate. And I'm going to see, there it is. There's my remote desktop protocol PFX or certificate that I just created. So I know that's in the root of the C drive and I'm going to need that here shortly. All right, so everything has installed and it's gone ahead and rebooted, which I just edited that part out. And so now we can go ahead and use the remote desktop services. So I'm going to click on remote desktop services that you see here. Now, what's unusual here is that any area that's grayed out, typically you'd think it's not configured, but that's the exact opposite of what's true. If it's grayed out, it means it has been configured. So for instance, if I click on RD uh, web access, you can see that you've got the RD web access deployment server role is already there, as well as the connection broker, all these other things. Now the RD gateway, that one hasn't been done yet. You don't really need to use the RD gateway unless you plan on having this internet facing. It adds additional security. Now, no companies that I know of are going to be having the remote desktop server facing the internet. It just doesn't make any good sense. So you don't need to install this particular role service because you're going you're gonna to be uh, sitting behind a firewall that's going to do that protection for you. Inside your network, you don't need the RD gateway, in my opinion. Now, other people might feel they need that extra security, but I find that it causes things to not work properly on the inside of a network if you use it. So I'm going to skip that and go right to RD licensing. I'm going to say that this server is also the RD licensing server. 
and go ahead and click Next and click Add. Now, by default, the licensing server is going to work for 180 days without needing any additional licenses. After that, you'll have to purchase your licenses from Microsoft. So in order to make this work, we have our four roles ready to go on this server. We have the connection broker, which goes ahead and redirects a remote desktop re request to this particular server. But if I had multiple servers, then it could do that as well. Then I have the session host. I got to have a session host in order to host any sessions, which are requests made from users. And then I have web access. Web access is great. I haven't configured it yet, but I'm going to here shortly. And after I do that, we'll be able to host this on websites as well. The great thing about web access is you can limit the amount of applications that a user uh, can access instead of giving them access to the full desktop. And you'll understand what that means here shortly. I'm going to click on tools and go down to Remote Desktop Services. This is the only area here for licensing issues. Uh, everything else for configuring Remote Desktop Services is done in Server Manager itself. So I'll click on the Licensing Manager just so you can see that it's there. You can see that it's not yet activated. So if you'd like to activate it, you can. You click Activate Server, click Next, do an automatic configuration. And you can see that since this is still in beta, I don't really have the ability to configure this, but I can still go ahead and use it. You can also choose the drop down and choose web browser or telephone if you have licenses there as well. But that doesn't matter. Everything is still going to work even without licenses for those 180 days. I'm using this server on Hyper-V as a virtual machine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a remote desktop connection request and gain access into this server. So I'm going to minimize my server there, and I'm going to choose Remote Desktop from the search area. And I want to open up the Remote Desktop settings. That's because I want to enable Remote Desktop on the server, and it is enabled, which is fantastic. And now I want to click on Remote Desktop User. So by default, the administrator already has access, as you see here. But if I want to let non-administrators in here, I need to add in either individuals or a group. Now I'm just going to open this up to all domain users, but of course you may not want to do that. So just put in the group name or individuals that you would like, and they'll now have access to this. I'm back on my host computer and I've typed in the IP address of my remote desktop services server. I can either go by name or IP. So I put in the IP address. I'll go ahead and click connect. And now I'm going to put in the login name. And the login name and password is now in. And I'm connecting for the first time to my remote desktop services server. And you can tell it's remote desktop. I'll just go to the top and you can see this little bar at the top showing that it is remote desktop. Now that will use the entire desktop if you choose this session mode full desktop option. And it's not the most efficient for using remote desktop services. So what we want to do is we want to set up the web services. So I'll go back into remote desktop services and I'm logged in as the administrator so I can go ahead and make these changes from here. And I'm going to click on Create Session Collections right in this link. And we get a wizard that shows up. So I'll click Next. And I'll just call this Collection 1. Click Next. And I'm going to choose my server that I'm on. But if you have a separate server doing this, you can go ahead and do that as well. And once again, I'm going to choose the, my, uh, the domain users for the group. That's fine. We can go ahead and leave that. Now, if you'd like to use user profile disks that go into a central location to make it easier to back up, you can go ahead and do that. I'm not going to choose that just for this demonstration because I don't have a special section for that set up. So I'll go ahead and click Create. And now it's creating the default collection. Now, there's no applications yet in it, so I still have to do more work to get this going. But the collection has now been created. So I'll click on Collection 1. And now I can go ahead and add programs into it. So I'm going to do that by choosing what's called Publish Remote App Programs. So I'll click on that. And now it's giving me a list of all the applications that are already installed on the server. If you don't see yours here, you can browse to it by clicking Add. Or if you haven't installed it yet, go ahead and install it and then come back here and see if it shows up in the list. So I'm going to choose the Calculator. 
and I'll scroll down. I'm also going to choose Notepad. So any one from these, this list I can go ahead and choose because it's already pre-installed. And the last one I'll choose is the Snipping Tool. Click Next and Publish. And I'll click Close. I'm going to go back into that collection and just give one additional program to this, and that is the desktop itself. So if you want users to be able to connect to the entire desktop, then you're going to want to choose the Remote Desktop Connection option. If you don't want them to, you can just publish the application separately. So now I have all those in there. And in order to complete my setup of the web server, I'm going to need to go back to Overview. And under Tasks, I'm going to need to choose to Edit Deployment Properties. So this is going to allow me to edit all the different role services that have been installed. The one that I'm really concerned about is the web access, but let's take a look at these. So once again, I did not choose the RD Web Gateway because it tends to add additional problems for connectivity, although it does add additional security if you choose to have your server on the outside of the network. Under licensing, I've already added in my licensed server, but I haven't added in the type of licensing. Now, typically you're going to use per user licensing. I've already added in my licensed server earlier, so I don't need to do that. Per user licensing means that a user can go onto any computer to access remote desktop services. Per device licensing is the opposite. It allows any device to have any user log into just that device. It's not as efficient of a way of doing things, and I don't know of anyone purchasing a per device licensing anymore. So I'll click apply to that particular change that we're going to be using per user licensing once we purchase the licenses. Now I'm going to go into the web access and you can see my web access server is already there. So nothing needs to be done there, but now I need to go into the certificate. So I need to add in that self-signed certificate I added in earlier. So I'll go ahead and choose to select an existing certificate, or you can create a new one if you haven't created yours yet. And I'm going to choose the certificate by browsing to it and going to the root of the C drive and choosing my RDP PFX certificate. I also need to use the same password that I used to create the certificate, which was that password that was in that commandlet. And I'll choose the allow the certificate to be added to the trusted root certification authorities and click OK. And now it's been applied successfully. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose the same th options here for all the other uh, different roles. And once again, check the box, click OK, click apply. So I've gone ahead and done that for all three of these. We don't have the fourth one because we did not install the gateway option. So now I'll click OK. That takes care of all of the configuration issues. Next, I'm going to open up a web browser and access the remote desktop services collection that I just created to be able to access those applications. So I'm in my web browser. I'm going to put in HTTPS colon slash slash followed by the name of the server. So I'll go ahead and paste that in, followed by slash RD web, remote desktop web. And now I'm going to get a connection is in private warning. That's okay. I expected that because I'm using the self-signed certificate. If you use a public certificate, you won't have that issue. So I'll go ahead and click continue. And now I get my remote desktop web page. So I'm going to log in for the first time. Click sign in. And there are all my different applications from my collection I created. I'm just going to go ahead and click on Calculator. Now, the first time you click on it, you're going to get this message saying, oh, this, there's a warning. You sure you want to do that? And you're going to be prompted for the username and password. So I'll go ahead and put that in again and click Remember Me. Click OK. And now you can see the remote desktop calculator has shown up. Now, you can tell this is a remote desktop calculator because at the bottom, you see the calculator with these little arrows on them. That means that it's not local to your computer. It is actually on the server. It's running from the server itself. Now, let's do the same with remote desktop. So I'll click Keep, Open File. Now it's giving me the option to go ahead and log in to the server using the entire desktop. And now it's logging in. And all that happened because of my access to this web services, the web access in using remote desktop. So now you've seen all of the remote desktop roles that can be installed and how they can be configured, as well as using the full desktop and the web version. 
And that is how you set up remote desktop services on a Windows 2025 server.